Just ease this crate to a stop, Mike. Just ease it. Like this, Johnny? Good. Good boy, Mike. Very good. Now let me have the shotgun. You want me to come with you? If you like. You might be helpful in spreading the talk around about what happens to a guy who crosses Johnny A. Very helpful. You know, he was making a deal with Big Eddie Morris. Yeah. I sure wouldn't like to be in Nick's shoes when he grabs the lead from that shotgun, boss. <laughs> you mind your own business like you've been doing, and you'll never catch lead from me, Mike. Never. Come on. Don't make no noise. Right. Hey, look, Johnny. You could see Nick from here. Back of his head through the window, see it? Sure. But I knew it would be there. I knew he'd be there. I've known everything he's done or thought of even in the past two weeks. Watch out for those bushes. You gonna get right on top of him, Johnny? I'm gonna get so close that I can't miss. So close. Like from right here. One slug through the window, then through him. And that should do it. Hey, sure, Johnny, sure. As soon as I fire, you and I beat it back to the car and get away fast. Very fast. I got you. Where, where, where do we go? He dropped me at Sonny's house. Gotta see my girl after a good night's work. She's going to South America tomorrow. That's another reason I gotta see her tonight. A guy's gotta give his girl a goodbye kiss. <laughs> yeah, that he does, that he does. Well, Mike, this is it. Hey, just thought of something. Yeah? Can't let nobody go away anywhere without saying goodbye. Hey, you mean your girl? Yeah. Well, you're going over there after this to say goodbye to her, ain't you? Sure. But, uh, she's not the only one going somewhere. You take Nick in there, he's going somewhere, too. So goodbye, Nick. Goodbye. <laughs> Please sit down, Miss Belmont. Thanks, dear. It's well laid out you got here. It pays to be a district attorney, don't it? Not too well financially, but rather well in satisfaction. I know what you mean, Markham. That's the kind of reason I'm here. Satisfaction. I'm going to pay off a guy named Johnny A. Have you heard of him? Yes. He rates way up there on our list of public enemies. Well, Markham, I was his girl. I was up to this morning. In an hour, I'm off to South America. Only before I go, I got this to tell you. You know Nicky Keating got blasted last night? I know of him. Johnny A. did that job, Markham. He killed Keating and came running to my place after he did it. I threw him out. You see, Nicky Keating was my brother. That's what I got to tell you. Get Johnny A., Markham. In view of what you told me, I don't doubt that we will. We'll need your testimony, of course. Uh-uh. You're on your own from here. Johnny A.'s got too many friends. He's all yours, but I've helped all I'm going to. I'm going to South America, and don't try any legal tricks to keep me here. I'll suddenly be taken with lapse of memory. Uh, where is Johnny A. now? I think he blew town. But I happen to know he'll be back tonight, and he'll head for my place. Oh? Bust in there around midnight tonight, and it's all yours. So long, Markham. Nice meeting you. Uh, when I get back, drop around to my place with your friend Philo Vance. Here he's kind of attractive. I may do that. Uh, where will you be in South America, Miss Belmont, in case we need you? Well, now, that's kind of hard to say, Markham. South America's such a big place. Pardon me, but I was told Philo Vance was in this gymnasium. Have you seen him? Sure, yeah, there he is over by the punching bag in the corner. So I'm glad I'm not that bag. <laughs> Thank you. Hello there, Vance. Well, Markham, 
Glad to see you. I'd ask you to sit down, but there isn't anywhere for you to sit except that exercise horse, and you'll be much more comfortable standing, believe me. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Uh, what are you doing at midnight, Vance? Well, up till now, there was a good chance I'd be sleeping. Why? Well, this morning, a girl named Sunny Belmont was in my office. Uh -huh. She told me that a gang leader named Johnny A. was the man who fired a shotgun slug into Nick Keating. Sonny Belmont? Isn't she Johnny A.'s girl? She was, but she was also Keating's sister. Oh. She left early today for South America, but she told us that Johnny A. would be at her house around midnight tonight. I thought maybe you'd like to be in on a kill that doesn't require any of your very adroit masterminding. Oh, I most certainly do, Markham. I'll be there. Rather unusual social event, though, isn't it? What do you mean? With the hostess out of town, there'll be a party at her house. A certain party, that is, of course. Drop his head in the water and keep it there a little longer. Yeah. He'll talk. No. Yeah. Go ahead, do like I say. Right, boss. No, no, don't do it. This comes no joking. Johnny A's right hand. And if it was Johnny A that knocked off Nick Keating, he'll tell me. Okay, hold him up. Right, boss. All right, Mike, this is your last crack at staying alive. Johnny A knew Nick was playing ball with me, so he made with a shotgun. Right or wrong? Now why is she going? That tub stick his head in it and hold him there this time. No, no. I'm running out of patience. No, no, wait a minute. Let these goons let go of me, will you? I'll talk. I heard what the man said, boy. Let go of him. All right. Okay, Mike. What do you got to say? It was Johnny A. All right. That's what I thought. Looks like the showdown between him and me, then. Big Eddie Morris against Johnny A. This has been coming for a long time. Where is Johnny? I don't know. Think the water might help you remember? No, no, look, Eddie, you gotta believe me when I tell you I don't know. The water tub, boys. I no. can't stand guys who only do halfway talk. I told you what you want to know. I told you. Now hold him there for a while, kid. Uh, not too long, of course, just till he stops breathing. And we make plans to get Johnny A. That's the second time that car's passed here, Vance. I know. And at midnight, it is a little unusual for a car to circle a block twice. You know, I think I recognize the man next to the driver, Big Eddie Morris. He's Johnny A's leading rival for gang dishonors in this town. And he, too, is watching the house of your friend, Miss Sonny Belmont. You know, all I can mean is that Johnny A is inside that house across the street, Vance. I think I'll signal to Sergeant Heath and close in on it. You imagine that Johnny A is in there asleep? Yes, I do. I believe, Miss Belmont's tip. Ethan and his men are waiting for me to wave this white handkerchief, and I think I'm going to do it. Well, it's exactly midnight. You might just as well. Look, that house, Vance, that explosion came from Miss Belmont's house. I know, and if Johnny A was in it, that's the end of him and the end of our case. Or so it seems. But somehow I doubt that very much. <laughs> Is this the Senorita Si. The operator has her, Markham, I think. Good, Momento, good. Senor, por favor. Gracias. Adelante, por favor, senor. Uh, just sit tight, Markham. I'm sure I'll contact Miss Belmont in South America. The operator's trying to get the call through now. Vance, it's only an hour since the explosion, but we've already done some great work on this case. The body in that house was identified without a shadow of a doubt as Johnny A's, and you succeeded in finding where Miss Belmont is. Not too difficult, Markham. There are only two airlines to South America. I checked them both. Found which one took a girl answering Miss Belmont's description of where they took her. The operator's now checking the hotels in that city. We'll be talking to her shortly. Wait and see. We're going to a lot of trouble just to inform the young lady that her ex-boyfriend is dead. I think I'd rather go after Big Eddie Morris. It was undoubtedly he or one of his gang that planted the bomb that wrecked Miss Belmont's home and killed Johnny A. I'm sure I'll be seeing your friend. Aquí Senorita Belmont. Um, hello. Hello. Hello, Senorita Belmont. Hello, Miss Belmont. This is Philo Vance. You don't know me. No, but... but I will, since I get back. I was mentioning to your friend Markham that we all ought to get together sometime. I'd hardly call 5,000 miles just to accept an invitation, Miss Belmont. Oh. I want to tell you that your boyfriend, Johnny A., is dead. Tried to shoot it out with the cops and caught one, huh? Not exactly. Your home is partially wrecked, Miss Belmont. A bomb exploded. And Johnny was caught in the blast. Good. The joint's insured, and he's out of my life. Now, 
I hope you let me know, Van. You're making sure I have a good time on my vacation. I'm glad you've enjoyed yourself up till now, because your vacation is over. You're coming back. Who says so? I do. Well, if I don't come back, what then? Then I'll come down and get you. <laughs> you know, Vince, that sounds like the best offer I've had in years. <laughs> Quiet down, will you please? Now listen, you guys, I talk better with a gun in my hand than I do with my face. <laughs> but I got something to say. Hey, go ahead. Hey, hey you mother. Give Big Eddie a chance, will you? He's paying for this party. Let him talk if you want. Yeah, hey, that's better. That's better. Quiet, please. Now get this. <coughs> We're gathered here tonight to mourn the passing of a beloved. of a beloved. <laughs> Well, never mind. I thought I had a speech memorized, but skip it. Now, look, look. Boys, this is straight from the feed box. Johnny A is dead. Some of you guys used to work for him. Okay, so now you work for me. What kind of a deal, Eddie? Same kind you got from Johnny A. The take is still here in this town. We'll make even more if we have one good organization instead of two fighting each other. Well... What do you say? Sure. That's what I want to hear. Sure. All right, fellas, enjoy yourselves. I'll be back in a minute. I, uh, I got to make a phone call and find out what happened to the dancing girls I ordered. <laughs> I hope nobody call away now. Here, yeah. wouldn't be struck enough to leave now, would you? I'll see you all in a couple of minutes. Why, the party going on in there, Eddie? Huh? Who are you? My name is Vance, Philo Vance. So, your name's Vance, and so there's quite a party going on in there. So? What's the occasion of the celebration? Oh, kind of a party to announce a new benefit organization. Yeah, that's what it is. A benefit organization. Whose benefit besides your own? Look, Vance, I know all about you. You're supposed to be smart, and you're supposed to be tough. Right now, I got a phone call to make. You're going to be smart and let me make it or tough and try to stop me? It might be very smart to stop this entire organization right now. Yeah? Eddie, I have an idea the district attorney wants to see you. So let him send me a summons. He did better than that. He sent me. You sure you know what you're doing, Vance? You yourself said I was smart. I take it back. You're an egghead. Now get out of my way. Seems to me I said you and I were going to see the D.A. Seems to me I... Now, uh, get. But the results are going to be the same. Thank you. You're going to be bouncing around any minute now, Eddie, and this ought to give you a start. Oh, wait. Uh, uh, so you to take me get hurt. This is District Attorney Markham. The Johnny A. murder case opened before Johnny A. was murdered. A was a gang leader who had killed an underling, Nick Keating. Johnny A's girl, Sonny Belmont, told me that before she left for South America. But while she was in South America, a bomb destroyed part of her home. And we found Johnny A's dead body. Vance spoke to Miss Belmont, and she flew back here, where she is now. In my office, waiting for Vance, who is going to see Johnny A. Kind of surprised I'm here, aren't you, Markham? Yes, and I'm just as surprised that Vance isn't. I wonder what's keeping him. Don't forget, he never got a look at me. If he had, he'd have been here an hour ago. What time is it, by the way? Five o'clock. I don't mind admitting that's what's worrying me. Vance went to see Big Eddie Morris two hours ago. You well, know, that's the trouble with you guys who carry watches. You worry too much. Me, I never carry them. I wouldn't have one around. What good are they? All they do is make you hurry when you want to take your time, and that's not for me. I'm a gal that likes to take her time. Your theory is undoubtedly excellent for you, Miss Belmont. But Vance should have been here an hour ago. Well, maybe he doesn't know I'm here. Oh, excuse me, please. Hello? Markham, sorry I've been delayed. Where are you, Vance? I only found out myself a few minutes ago. It seems that Big Eddie and I had a little session. Well, I guess we made too much noise because a few of his friends interrupted us. And that's all I remember. Are you hurt? Well, my eye isn't in very good condition. There must have been five or six of them, so I don't feel too badly, although I guarantee a few of them do. I'm glad it was nothing serious, Vance. But listen, Miss Belmont is here in my office. We've been waiting for you. Meet me instead, will you, Markham, at what was once her home. And bring Miss Belmont with you, if you will. 
I'm sure she can help close this case and round up an entire gang of criminals and killers. All right, Vance, we'll be there. I'll bring Miss Belmont and a squad of Sergeant Heath's best men. Never mind them, Markham. Just bring Miss Belmont and a piece of beefsteak for my eye. <laughs> Quite a mess they made of this room in your house, Miss Belmont. Big Eddie Morris made quite a mess out of you, Vance. And the stuff in this house is insured. So am I, against repetition of an accident like the one that happened to me. Markham, your men looked over this place pretty well, didn't they? The police bomb squad did. They found evidence that the blast was caused by a simple bomb which could have been planted in the house or thrown through a back window. Presumably by the men in the car we saw circling the block. Well, let's see now. Blast was at midnight. Miss Belmont, you got to South America sometime during that day. What time was it? I've got no idea. Time doesn't mean a thing to me. Uh, Miss Belmont has an allergy where watches and clocks are concerned, Vance. Won't have them around. When I get anywhere, as long as I get there, I'm on time. Understand, Ben? I can understand why anyone who had an appointment with you would subscribe to that, yes. You know, you're quite attractive. Throw away your watch sometime and I'll come over and see you. Do that, Miss Belmont, please. In the event you do, we'll need no watch. Time will stand still. <laughs> you know, I was under the impression that we met here to get some evidence against Big Eddie Morris. Oh, I got all the evidence I needed before you arrived, Martin. You remember I was here first. Uh, yes. What evidence did you find? This. What's that? It looks like a piece of tin. It is a piece of tin. A curved piece, about three inches long, I'd say. The color is, well, a sort of dull gray. I picked it up off the floor. With all the beautiful bric-a-brac in this room shattered by the explosion, why would a piece of tin interest you, Vance? I don't understand it. But then again, I don't have to. Just say the word and we'll move in and make an arrest. You're the district attorney, my friend. It's a little silly to make an arrest if you can't get a conviction, and I haven't enough proof. Yet. My next move is to get more proof. And Miss Belmont. Yes? I'm going to need your help. Sure, sure, I know you. I'm a Johnny A's girl. Right? I was Nick Keating's sister, Eddie. Long before I was Johnny A's girl. And Johnny killed Nick. Oh. Well, what do you want with me? Look, Eddie. You know I was the finger in every jewel lift Johnny ever made. I went to a nightclub, spotted the dames with the biggest diamonds and the best-looking furs, and put the finger on them for Johnny. I could do that for you. Yeah, you could and you could double-cross me, too. You think I'd do that, Eddie? For the guy that did me a favor and rubbed out the guy that killed my brother? I don't know. I'll let you know after you work your first job for it. Waiting for somebody, friend? Huh? Oh, it's you, Brad. That's right, and you're one of Eddie Morris's boys. One of the boys that piled into me when Eddie and I were seeing how tough we were at the banquet yesterday. Oh, gee, Vance, I had to do that. If I hadn't, uh, what about a lot of guys smacked into you? Don't pick on me. Why are you sitting in this car with the engine running across the street from a very smart nightclub? As if I couldn't guess. Look, Vance, don't interfere with it. Keep out of it. Don't mess around. You're getting big at his hair. Get out of the car. I'm sitting in for you. Not a chance, Sancho. <coughs> Sorry, my friend. If my information is right, I can't waste time. Now, you go. Come on. Ah, that's it. Now, ah, you'll keep right there until the police... Uh -oh. Okay, Joe, get going. Hey, fellas, wait for right, me. Get going, quick. I'll you guys. Get to, Sonny. Yeah, I'm in. Wait a minute, I said. Come on, I said, Joe. Get this car moving. Nice work, Sonny. Thanks, Eddie. This time when I grab, that'll be at least 15 carats. <laughs> nice piece of change. Joe, where are you driving? Just a minute. I'm not driving anywhere, and I'm not Joe. Vance. Hey. That's right, only I'm not alone this time. I have a gun for company, as you can see. And there's a car full of policemen right in back of us. You crossed us, didn't you, Sonny? I ought to... Please, Eddie, don't do anything you won't live to regret. Miss Belmont had her choice of crossing you or helping us. Right, Miss Belmont? That's right, Ben. And you're so much better looking than Eddie.
Eugene Lacey, alias Potato Head Williams, suspicion of robbery, suspicion of murder. Step down. Got the whole Eddie Morris gang, eh, Mark? The entire bunch bats, and that includes all of Johnny A's boys, too. Eddie Morris, alias Big Eddie Morris, suspicion of robbery, murder. Step down. And that winds it up, Mr. Markham. Thanks, Haley. Keep them all nice and happy until we need them. Okay, dear. Lance, you know who really deserves a vote of thanks? Sonny Belmont. She certainly helped us. She most certainly did. Which reminds me, I have an appointment with her at her new apartment. I want to thank her for her help. But you already thanked her, perhaps. In my office an hour ago. Yes, I did, Markham, but uh, not enough. <laughs> I couldn't. There were too many people around. Anybody ever tell you you were wonderful, Vance? Not recently. Now, put me down in your book at today's entry, then. You're wonderful. I left my book home. I'm afraid you'll just have to keep on telling me. I'd tell you anything, Vance, any time. Well, not to switch from a very interesting subject, me. I'd like to know something about Johnny A. What, for instance? What kind of a man was he? He was a scared rat. He never moved without a bodyguard. He used my place as a hangout. You know why? Why? Because he was scared to use his own apartment. I thought I loved him. He wasn't afraid to use your house? That house was the safest spot in the city. Windows were bulletproof. Doors were sheet metal. You couldn't get into that joint with an acetylene torch. Johnny A. paid for all those extras. Quite a character. Yeah. Well, we talked about him. About you. About me. Now let's talk about you and me. Sounds very interesting. We'll see how interesting after you tell me just one more thing, if you don't mind. When you left for South America, where was Johnny A? I don't know. He came to the house after he killed my brother, told me he'd be back the following midnight, and left. I imagine if he'd left, he'd be alive today. What do you mean, if he'd left? He did leave. No. No, I'm afraid you killed him before you left for South America, despite the explosion which occurred when you were 5,000 miles away. I'm afraid I can prove you killed him, Miss Belmont. Now it's... Your turn to be afraid. Please, Vance, let's not waste time with this. I've got to know how you built the state's case against Sonny Belmont. All right, let's start from the beginning, Markham. All right. Our house was practically a fortress. Metal doors, bulletproof glass, everything you could think of. How could anybody get in there to plant a bomb in the living room? Perhaps it was planted there the day before it went off. Someone coming in pretending to be a meter reader or something. It was planted there the night before by Miss Belmont. She had been trying to break up with Johnny for some time, had a bomb all prepared. When he told her he had killed her brother, she shot him. Then prepared the bomb to explode at midnight the next evening. How did you know that? Remember the piece of tin I picked up in her house, Markham, in the room where the bomb exploded? Yes, of course. Dullish gray, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh-huh. A piece of metal like that could come from a cheap alarm clock. I checked and found an alarm clock the same color in a store near Miss Belmont's home. Yes, that would indicate a time bomb was used in as much as Miss Belmont had an aversion to clocks. Even if she had no aversion to them, Markham, she never would have had a cheap alarm clock in a lavishly furnished room. It was a time bomb, all right. Yes. Vance, the Eddie Morris gang could have planted that bomb. Markham, the day of the explosion, you had Miss Belmont's house watched every moment from the time she left your office. But your men never saw Johnny A. come in that day, yet his body was found after the explosion. Uh, What's the answer? Simple. Johnny A. had been there since the night before. Dead, of course, but there just the same. Yes. The Morris gang could never have gotten into that house at any time to plant a bomb. Well, Miss Belmont's confession shows your reasoning was correct. She had me fooled completely, especially since she helped us trap the Eddie Mars gang. That was merely to throw us off her trail, just as her trip to South America was supposed to do. Yes, I know that now. Too bad about her, Vance. She's very attractive. I thought she was attractive at the beginning, Markham, but she's just a killer at the end of the Johnny A. murder case. <laughs> 